Electrochemistry involves electrochemical cells, two types of electrochemical cells, the galvanic and the electrolytic. In the galvanic, we are using the chemicals in it to produce electricity, while in the electrolytic one, we are forcing an electric current through the cell to bring out a chemical reaction. Let's look at our galvanic first of all. Examples of the galvanic cells are the car batteries, dry cells for torches, radios, mobile phones, etc. So what we're doing is the chemicals in there are generating electricity. Well, in this one here, in the electrolytic cells, we're using a process called electrolysis. And what is electrolysis? Basically, electrolysis is when an electric current is passed in a solution or molten state called the electrolyte causing a, chemi causing a chemical reaction. Let's look at some examples where that they can be applied to is an electroplating, that is you put a film, thin film of metal on the surfaces of other metals to improve its appearance uh, or to prevent corrosion. The other important application is extraction of reactive metals such as aluminium and sodium from their ores. So if you've got aluminium oxide which is in the ore, you pass an electric current through it through electrolysis to extract the aluminium, same with sodium. Other processes where it's useful is industrial production of sodium hydroxide, chlorine, hydrogen, and also recharging of batteries. So in these, on this side, the galvanic cells, which are batteries, you, when they run out of electricity, you can just recharge them by passing electricity through them in the opposite direction. The refining of copper metal. And the last one here is increasing the thickness of the surface oxide layer on aluminium metal to improve the resistance to corrosion. Okay, here we've got our galvanic cell. It looks complicated. Basically, they are the two sides. On this side, we've got an electrode. In this case, it has a copper electrode, and on the other side, it's a silver electrode. Uh, they don't have to be that. They could be inert electrodes like carbon and platinum. But in this case here, the copper is actually involved in the chemistry. So here it is here. You have the copper becoming a copper ion. It releases two electrons. That process you know as oxidation. The electrons move up the neck, the anode, as it's referred where oxidation occurs. It's a negative electrode. And go through a wire, and I've got a meter here showing the direction it's going, and go to the other side, to the other electrode, in this case here, it's silver. And on this side, the electrons are accepted by the silver ions to form silver. So on this side we are depositing silver on the silver anode, on the silver electrode, and on this side, slowly, this copper electrode will be eventually uh, dissolved away to form copper ion, given enough time. Now, what happens here on this side here is we are producing more copper ions. In other words, the, positive, the charge is increasing here positively, so this side is becoming more positive. And on this side we are taking away the silver ions, so we are producing an excess of negative charge. So in order to keep electrical neutrality, we have what we call a salt bridge, and this is a potassium nitrate salt bridge. And what happens is because you're getting more positive on this side, silver, uh, I mean, nitrate ions from here go across it to uh, balance the excess positive charge. And when these leave, they uh, actually balance the uh, the excess negative charge. So that's what happens with a salt bridge that is able to maintain electrical neutrality. So the current flows through there and it goes through here through positive ions, uh, uh, negative ions going to the uh, positive electrodes and positive ions there. So the circuit is complete. So that's how electric current flows. Okay, when a galvanic cell is producing electricity, several distinct processes can be recognized. The first one is one electrode process liberates electrons which flow up the metallic conductor. Let's have a look at it here. This side here is where oxidation is occurring. So it liberates electrons, they go up the metallic conductor and go to the other side. These electrons, as I said here, flow through the metallic conductor of the external circuit to the other electrode. So that's where they're going there. The other electrodes consumes these electrodes, electrons. All right? That's where reduction is occurring. And the fourth important thing about it is that ions migrate through the solutions and the connecting salt bridge to maintain electrical neutrality. All right? So that is a 
important thing about that. Now here's a diagram which shows what would happen over time. So in other words, if we had this running over a long period of time connecting, what will happen is that the copper will eventually be uh, dissolved away, producing copper ions all the time, and a lot of silver will be depositing on this side. So we'll be increasing the concentration of copper ions, and over here, uh, the silver ions would run out. So once the silver ions run out, you can't get silver forming, and once the copper runs out, can't get any more copper, so the process would will stop. So that's why I've put here the electron flow goes back to zero. So this is a discharge will occur. So our batteries eventually discharge. Now uh, to reverse that process we can use electrolysis and that's the next part of the thing about it. Like I said this discharge can be reversed by using electrolysis.